Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So just a short video really. Um, this is a topic that I've actually been asked to talk about many times, but something that I kind of shy away from because at the current stage I'm at, um, I don't know a huge amount about the topic. I only know a bit about the topic, but what I do know about it, I figured might be interesting to uh, tell you guys as my state of um, knowledge increases. So what I'm holding in my hands here is a sword that I have been sent by my friend Jersey from Poland of the silk fencing team. A lot of you will know him from his own videos in fact and from the fact that he's been featured on my channel in the past. If you search up uh, search Polish Sabre on my um, videos, search under my videos, you'll find stuff with him in interview and uh, a chat. Now what is this? This is quite simply an early, or it's obviously a replica, but an early style of Hungarian Turkish, Turco-Hungarian um, medieval Sabre. Okay, so this is a sabre, not like the normal sabres um, that you guys are used to me talking about. Okay, this is where those came from ultimately. This is where sabres in Central and Eastern Europe began. Now, one of the misconceptions that lots of people seem to be under is that sabres as such came from the Islamic countries of the Middle East and North Africa. Um, and Turkey. And this is a slight misunderstanding. It's much more complicated than that. Now, this is why I'm going to keep this short. I could go into more depth on this and I probably will do in a future video when my own knowledge is more up to scratch. But to keep it short, essentially the saber has a sort of complicated origin in that if we look at Turkey for example let's just look at the origin of the kilich in Turkey well in actual fact we can start to see what we would call a kilich that is a curved single-edged sword essentially a saber with a raised yelman or false edge at the back and we can start to see them from about the 13th 14th century now there might be some hints that they start to appear earlier than that however in Turkey, those swords, swords that look a bit like this fundamentally, okay, so a cross-hilted um, hilt, <laughs> uh, not, not totally unlike actually European swords at all, so cross-hilted there, not much of a pommel, the pommel's more there as an end cap rather than necessarily a counterbalance, and then a fairly simple grips, okay, so cross-hilted and then with a slightly curved blade, and that's important, what you think of as a kilich, and if you Google kilich, which is spelt either K-I-L-I-C or K-I-L-I-J, if you search Google for kilich, you'll usually come up with very curved versions. These are essentially 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century swords. If you're actually looking at medieval ones, they're, un they're not as curved as that. So they seem to have started to become common in Turkey around the, the 14th century, essentially. Um, now, we don't know exactly why they started to emerge in Turkey at that time. There's some suggestion that it was to do with Persian influence or Mamluk influence or indeed Mongol influence. And the problem is in the 14th century, we have a real clash of cultures going on in the Orient, as it was known. That is, the Mamluks were at their height. The Mongols were pretty much at their height and just maybe slightly over their, their peak. Um, and the Persian Empire was equally quite important at that point. And so we've got this intermingling of cultures that all started to use um, or started to popularise curved swords, sabre types in it, essentially, at about the same time. So in the 14th century, all of those cultures were using swords that looked a bit like this, okay? Slightly curved sabres, many of them with a raised yelman or sometimes a clip back point. Um, but if we go back to the 11th, 12th century, most cultures, uh, certainly the ones that I've just mentioned, were using straight, for the most part, double-edged swords, sometimes straight single-edged swords. So we're not entirely clear on how the kilich or indeed how the Eastern and Central European sabre really developed. Was it a, was it a mixture of cultural influences? Was it one um, type of sword that spread from one place to all the others? We, we don't really know. It's a very complicated matter. But just what I want to say is one interesting fact is a lot of people assume that the sabre, i.e. this, came to Hungary as a result of the Turks. 
Well, you'd be wrong. Um, <laughs> quite simply because the people of Hungary weren't Huns. The, uh, the Huns, as in Attila, so many of the Huns did settle in Hungary and give Hungary its name. However, the mass of the populace of Hungary were known in Charlemagne's time, Charles the Great's time, as Avars. So the majority of the Hungarians, as I understand it, descend from Avars. Now we know that in Charlemagne's time, the Avars, i.e. the people of Hungary, Hungary being central and some people would call it Eastern Europe, they used sabers. That's right. So the Hungarians were using a form of saber in Charlemagne's time in the 9th century. And yet the Turks weren't really using the kilich until the kind of 13th century, 13th, 14th century. So there we go, folks. I'm just going to finish all that. There might be some things that I, I'm not explaining perfectly yet, but as far as I have read so far, it's quite eye-opening that actually, rather than the common conception being that the sabre came to Europe from Asia or um, the Orient or even Africa, it seems like the sabre developed in Europe, in Central and Eastern Europe, kind of by itself, maybe partly as maybe from Hunnic uh, influences, maybe from what essentially is now Mongolia. We don't really know. It's a bit of a mystery and there's lots of interesting research to be done on it. But the headline for me is that actually the sabre or the kilich or the shamshir, all of these variations of the sabre developed at roughly the same time or over the course of a few centuries in many different places. It's not that the sabre came from one place and spread to everywhere else, or at least we can't see that being the case yet. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.